early every weeknight to discuss the latest in news and entertainment right here on WOCA, The Source. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Twenty-one minutes after nine o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Monday morning. Beautiful day. Now that the storm has passed, <laughs> the temperatures are a little bit cooler. Felt good sleeping. Do you have a porch? You have a screened-in porch. You sit on. Yep, what do I you do. do? What do you do out there? Do you do you read books? I got a good one to recommend to you. Uh, it is written by a guest who's been with us before. Jerry Ferris Finger is on the phone. She is a retired journalist, and uh, she wrote for the Atlantic Journal Constitution. That's one I know. She may have others, uh, and she's written a new book called American Nights, N I G H T S. Uh, but it sounds like you could you could put a K in there also with this story, right? Yes. Um, it's a it's a Mariah Drew Richard Lake mystery novel. You might be familiar with Jerry's work in the past. Good morning, Jerry. How you doing? I'm doing fine. How about you? I'm doing good. I can't remember where you live. Where are you? Well, on the coast of Georgia. In Georgia. <laughs> How did you fare out in the storm? Uh, we evacuated to Atlanta. You did. Well, yeah, uh, all of the uh, coastal counties in Georgia, seven of them, were under mandatory evacuation. We just came back last night. And how did it look when you got back? Uh, trees down, no damage, no none down on our house, thank God. They were down in the road, and uh, you could see where the water had risen, but you know, not into the houses. We're about, for the, for a coastal county, we're about where we live four miles in and uh, about 16 feet above sea level okay so the little town of st mary's was flooded wow so how does that affect the, a journalist uh, i mean a novelist's mind you're a journalist and a novelist but how does it affect the novelist is there going to be a story with a flood in it somebody falls in love after they're evacuated or something like that <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good idea. <laughs> in, in, in this story, you know, part of this story, um, I, I've I've known a couple of couples that were married. Um, what, what do you what do you call it? Um, arranged marriages. I've known a couple mm-hmm. couple of couples like that, and they seem happy. But it's, the cultural differences are part of what makes this story ex- extra interesting, I guess. Mm-hmm. You know, if, I mean, if you have a child. And, and people don't like the child because they don't like the fact that you're a mixed marriage, which is part of this story also. Uh, and I'll mm-hmm. let you explain the story to the listeners. But, I mean, that that always troubles me when that happens. And it, it happens right here in Ocala. Not, yes. Not with, ro- not with royalty in, in our case, but mm-hmm. just, just with people in general. Um, so how did, this, how did this story come? You know what? Before I ask you how did it come to be, give us the thumbnail sketch, like the movie trailer version of the story. Uh, well, a Saudi Arabian prince had gone to college with uh, Portia Devon, Mariah Drew's good friend. And, you know, they were in law school and all of that in Washington, D.C. Well, Prince Hussam asked Portia to convince Drew to find his wife and daughter. Uh, his wife, Reeve, and his daughter's name is Sherazad. Mm-hmm. Drew is a private detective. She specializes in finding missing children. Well, Hassam, you know, takes him out to dinner and gets to know him, and and he really isn't upfront about the reason he wants to find his missing family. I mean, Drew just finds him charming but unbelievable. Mm-hmm. He tells of falling in love with Reeve in college, turning his back on his possible att- ascendancy to the power structure in the kingdom for the woman he loves. Then they have a, a four-year-old daughter four-year-old now and he tells her and drew uh, and lake about his uh king's disapproval of him marrying and siring an infidel and but he says his king is willing to forgive and wants him to come back home marry his betrothed and get in line to be an heir to kingship this is saudi of course confused drew thinks she's fallen into a fairy tale portia had told her that the prince is a great storyteller and is partial to reciting tales from the thousand and one nights aka arabian nights 
And he tells a lot of stories in this novel, which, you know, I loved the research in this novel because it gave me a chance to go back and read a lot of those stories. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, um, but anyway, Drew goes to talk, goes to see Reeves' parents, Lowell and Don Cressley, and they don't seem too disturbed that Reeves is miss, missing with Sharazan. They hate the prince. And are, I mean, they're disagreeable people themselves. And Lowell is a prominent surgeon, and his wife Donna is a charity matron. And um, Lowell is an alcoholic and has made medical mistakes, which also is featured later on the book. But the Cressleys are then murdered. And the suspects mount. Of course, the number one suspect is their son in law, their mm. hated son in law. Yeah, yeah. And. Um, so, um, as a U.S. resident, Prince Hussam is a partner in a New York law firm, and Reeve is a scientist who works for NASA in the planetary division in Boulder, and they spend little time living together. They each have their own special lives, and, and then the child kind of falls. She, she's with her mother most of the time, but she kind of falls in between the two of them, and as Drew remarks, nobody in this tale is faithful, and it's sort of like the Arabian Nights story. Yeah, yeah. It is really, really fascinating stuff. But when you put a child into the mix, yeah, uh, that's uh, that that shows that hopefully they can be found because usually with a, a child, people are gonna notice that. So uh, Drew has a a, a trail of, along with her uh, friend Richard. So they mm-hmm. they do a, a wonderful job in investigating. Yeah, they do. They do. Um, but you you talked to me, uh, about uh, maybe the impetus, what gave me the idea for uh-huh. the story. Yes, yes. Well, I was waiting in the dentist's office, and I I didn't have my all my electronics with me to read novels, so or you know whatever I wanted to read. So I picked up a magazine, and it was something like you know people, but it had the ten most handsome people in the world. <laughs> And I fastened on this great-looking prince. And he stayed with me, and when I I sat down to write another story, you know, the blank page, he came to mind, and I thought, boy, you know, I, I you know, with the Saudi Arabia stuff and all through this novel, Drew says, God, don't let this be about terrorism. You know, right. she she doesn't mind. You know, she'll work for the prince and semi believing him, but she says, "I want nothing to do with terror." Oh my gosh! And you, you hold the reader as always with this one. Uh, the, good. The book is called American Nights. Uh, Jerry Ferris Finger is who you will look up. Jerry spells her first name G E R R I E. Ferris is uh, as in a Ferris wheel and finger as in the five fingers on your hand. I have a copy of the book. If you call me, I will uh, put your name on it and Robert will put it away so you can come pick it up. The rest of us, however, have to go buy it. Jerry, you have a website? Yes, I do. JerryFerrisFinger.com. And is the book on all the other websites that sell books? Yes. Amazon, etc.? Yeah, etc. Et and big box stores if and, and libraries. If they don't have it, they'll get it. All right. Thank you so much for being on the air with us again, and uh, I'm glad you, you fared well through the storm. Oh, we did. We had fun Very in Atlanta. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> JerryFerrisFinger.com. Go to Jerry's website, and, and you'll find out more about the book. Uh, again, it's called American Nights. Jerry, thank you so much. We will be right back. Thanks. News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. More fireworks at last night's presidential debate on the issue of fighting terrorism, Donald Trump linking attacks to Muslims. Whether we like it or not, there is a problem. And we have to be sure that Muslims come in and report when they see something going on. When they see hatred going on, they have to report it. Hillary Clinton responding. We are not at war.